So Radha Rasudamiri, 144. The power of Radha's nectarian worship. By daily singing only the holy name of Sri Radha, millions of the best spiritual practices become rejectable. <clears throat> By worshipping the nectar of Sri Radha's lotus feet, millions of the best human goals of life are abandoned because there are millions of great fish yielding trees in the playground of Sri Radha's lotus feet, Sri Vrindava. A millions of perfections roll at the feet of Sri Radha's maidservant, uncared for. So again, this is a, like a, a verse that is like putting millions of comparisons in such a high quantity that the mind will believe that Radha's name is very powerful. By daily singing only the holy name of Sri Radha, millions of the best spiritual practices become rejectable. By worshipping the nectar of Sri Radha's lotus feet, millions of the best human goals of life are abandoned because there are millions of great wish yielding trees in the playground of Sri Radha's lotus feet, Sri Vrindavan, and millions of perfections roll at the lotus feet or of the, at the feet of Sri Radha's maidservant uncared for. <coughs> The power of Radha's nectarian worship. Commentary. Sripad, still in his Sadaka Avesh, shows here how fixed he is in devotion to Sri Radha. He says, simply by daily chanting the name of Radha, millions of great spiritual practices become rejectable. So there are many, many different kinds of spiritual practices. Nice to meet you. Welcome. That people do to make any spiritual advancement, right? We do uh, chant many mantras. We try to take austerities, we follow certain rules of cleanliness, and we try to keep the mind pure. We want to improve our consciousness, at least to come to the soul level, to get out of the senses. But here Baba says, or Sripad Prabodananda Sarasvati says, simply by daily chanting the name of Radha, millions of great spiritual practices become rejectable. Become rejectable. What does it mean? We can give everything else up, right? Yes. Yes. Is that uh, quite a high... Uh... So, I was feeling because Everybody worshiping God, like Amazon. Please go to give me money, give me wife, give me work, give me, you know, nice house, etc. Or even spiritual liberation. Moksha. Moksha. Or even living in Vaikuntha planet, or even Dwaraka. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
He has mentioned this is it this is rejectable compared to to nectar of Radha's name. Actually Radha's name means Radha's intimate service. Yesterday one devotee said to Gurudev, yesterday on Radha Sami days, I realized holy name of the Radha and Radha herself is same. By realization, I got it. And then Gurudev was so pleased. Yes, that's it. You know, that is our our say, kind of perfection. So the name of Radhika is so powerful. Also, service of Radharani is ultimate goal of perfection. Gurudev used to say 10 to 10, 10, 10 Bhagavad Gita. Just Krishna's worship is the the ultimate goal of progress. Ultimate goal of progress, progress is Krishna. And then if we assign Krishna, then we can get ultimate goal of life. But the Prabhupada does not mention what is the ultimate goal of life clearly in this sentence. But this is, I feel, this is Radha's name, Radha's service is ultimate goal of life. And then if we feel this loving relationship and save us, then everything is so insignificant. Everything else. Everything else is so insignificant. So this is very amazing. Yes, it's a very um, strong, what do you say that, outside expression. A strong point. Statement. Statement. Yes, statement. Thank you. Tom. Thank you. It seems that we lost them. So Niti. So maybe you can share about this statement, Anun Baba? Yeah, let's let's wait ten seconds. I don't want to be taking over without cause, you know. Let's let's wait a little bit. So I can say something in the meantime to preach until they come back. So this verse, Suniti, uh, chose a very, very wonderful verse. It is said in the Prema Bhakti Chandrika, there are four goals of life. There is Dharma, Arta, Karma and Moksha. But the highest of these four, there is one more. And there is one more goal and this is the highest goal of life is Prema. So, so what actually is Prema? So up until Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now they are back. <laughs> now they are back. So up until Mahaprabhu, this kind of Prema, which is mentioned here in this verse, was not mentioned anywhere. So I was just saying, Suniti and Chayananda, that there are four human goals of life, Dharma, Arda, Kama, Moksha, and Prema. So up to Mahaprabhu, Prema was always Krishna Prema. But this highest gift of Mahaprabhu, now we have here in this verse, the seva to the lotus feet of Swamini is the highest Prem uh, to be attained. So this is the glorification now from Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur of this highest fifth goal called Prema. And this is 
Manjari bath. This is the Kingari bath, which is the highest attainable goal for the Jiva. And please take over. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mute, unmute technology. So, Mahana, you want to share, but <laughs> someone else. No, it's okay. Otherwise, it's here. So, simply by daily chanting the name of Radha, millions of great spiritual practices become rejectable. Sakyatan is the emperor of all sadhana and gives prema to everyone who surrenders to it without discriminating. Now Baba is explaining different kinds of sadhana. And Sankatan is, of course, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, the great giver in his Kali Yuga. This item of devotion should never be given up, for it purifies the mind and the heart, and thus helps one to enter into smara. So this is the highest kind of sankata. We are chanting together with smara, with the remembrance I of radicals. I think this is a, sorry. Yes. I think this is this is a very very deep so and a very have, very. Uh, oh yeah yeah maybe. Again now. I I think this is a very very deep sentence. This item of devotion should never be given up, for it purifies the mind and heart. And thus helps one to enter into Smaran. So many people and many devotees, including me, we always think, yeah, when, when, when can I do Smaran? When can I do meditation? When can I go into this beautiful Lila Smaranam? So here it comes the answer. Baba is giving us the answer. We should not give up hope, but we should continue practicing uh, uh, Kirtanam. Sankirtanam is the first step that we purify our heart. Chetadarpanam, we clean our hearts. And the more we clean our hearts, the easier it gets to remember the Leelas of Radha and Krishna. Everyone has this experience when the mind is not fixed. It is very difficult to enter and remember and meditate the Leelas. But when the mind is in a clean state, that means when you don't have any... Uh, 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 thoughts of, of other things, it becomes more easy. So this statement is a very, very good statement to give us hope that by purifying the mind, the, the meditation becomes more easy. This is the Acharya's hope, giving us hope. I just wanted to, to mention. Very nice, yes. I want to also share this morning, we had a nice class with our Russian brother, Damodar. He has also very high capacity of Smaran. It's, uh, it's evident. And uh, I asked Gurudev, how is it? Oh, he says this is from past lives. So that is also possible that someone brings a lot of... Uh, you know, capable, you know, abilities, you know, blessings from past life, and they can easily absorb uh, themselves. We were speaking about the uh, chin drop on Shimati Radhika's, you know, the mask, mask drop on her chin, and he was giving so nice uh, sharing of his meditation on that and how how Mandri is feeling, how she's. Uh, doing this service and what she is telling Swamini and it was beautiful and I could realize that oh yeah I have a long way to go but then I think we are here in Vrindavan 
and we help each other. There is no need to be hopeless. It can come at any second. No? The realization can come in any second. And the feeling is always uh, eagerness and also humility. And if we see others who have more capacities, they have more realizations, then I become very greedy also to, to learn from them and to listen about their feelings. So it was beautiful. Gurudev was also saying how, how beautiful it is when we go into Smaran and uh, can experience the closeness of Swamini's service through the verses and Amanda Prabhu was stressing we should not uh, jump and quickly go through the verses with the service with the personal service but we should really go into each detail and go deeply into the details so it was very inspiring to hear him and to also be encouraged by his uh, depth no mm. no so these millions of spiritual practices become that become rejectable do not incl include the vital items of devotional practice like hearing chanting remembering worshiping the deity and so on the text does not say that all devotional practice become rejectable but practices like deliberate austerities cultivation of book knowledge following ordinary religious principles and so on become rejectable so we can see also that in our lives Gurudev is guiding us to one special attention on Srimati Radhika's service and on the maid servanthood. And for this, we are concentrating on these books who help us, which are Shri Shri Radhara Sudhanedi and Shri Vilapa Kushmajuri. There are many great books, and you know. But this one pointedness is one pointedness, this uh, goal oriented uh, reading is important, otherwise the mind is so broad and so unfixed, it will be difficult to focus on the one mood that we want to learn how to accomplish in our hearts and to live in this mood. Sri Prat Sanatan Goswami writes in the opening of Brihad Bhagavatamrita. All glories to the ecstatic holy name of Murari Krishna that stops all endeavors like Dharma, Puja and Yoga meditation. And Sanatan Goswami writes in his own commentary, the result of the miserable process of following the rules and regulations of the caste and ashram system. The difficulty of fixing one's mind during efforts to meditate or to listen attentively to a lecturer or the miserable process of collecting pure paraphernalia for puja, formal worship, will easily be awarded simply by taking shelter of the holy name. So that is already also in the same category that Sanatan Goswami is encouraging all living entities to take shelter of the holy name and to give up, to try to be, you know, a hundred percent percent perfected in all the rules and regulations because we are there born in the Kali Yuga. It will be very difficult, if not impossible, for us to do everything right and to fulfill all the, how do you say that, fulfill all the standards, no? <laughs> like caste and, you know, because we are, for the, for the Indian population, if we see it only from Indian point of view, 
we are the Mlechas, we come from the, you know, fa families of cow eaters. And there was a time, especially also in India, where people like us, they were not uh, considered to be able to do any devotional practice because it seems that we have been in such a low birth that, you know, our whole existence for the, the Indian Brahmanas and Vaishnavas was already like, in, you know, polluted. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to, to wake up all souls to the chance of this, you know, a special Kali Yuga where there is no consideration of caste and ashram and background, but taking shelter of the holy name is the highest welfare for all beings. And then it doesn't really matter where we have come from, where we have been born. And we see that Srila Prabhupada did this by his generous spreading of the holy name. Also, Sanatan Goswami here is very indirectly pointing the finger to Raganuka Bhakti because he is saying that all this formal worship all these deliberate austerities, all these things, is completely useless if the mind is not focused on Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Baba will explain later. So here he is clearly, clearly saying that this is not the way to go. So we should always be eager, like you said, to hanker for these beautiful feelings of the manjari. So in the association of devotees, like we are here, we all now can very nicely understand that here, we find another of these evidences that only Raganuka Bhakti can, can bring you close because in Vaidhi Bhakti, like Sanatan Goswami is just saying now, there is no name of, of Swami, there is no glorification of the names of Radhika. So this can only happen and this can only appear when your mind mm -hmm. is on the path of Raganuka Bhakti. Yes, and it goes even higher now, because now it comes to Swamini's name. <laughs> that is such a nice, uh, that's why I like this verse, it goes from Krishna to Swamini, and that is so sweet. Although love for Krishna is the fifth goal of human life, and it is transcending religiosity, economic development, sense gratification and liberation, Still, the service of Sri Radha is more attractive and relishable and causes Radha's devotee to give up even the devotional service of Krishna. Wow! <laughs> this is amazing. Which leads to love for Krishna. <laughs> so here we got it. <laughs> even the devotees of Radha, they don't. They don't aspire for Krishna's devotional service anymore. They will serve Radhika now. And that, you know, giving up Krishna's devotional service means not trying to make him the center of my, you know, efforts and my desires. This will guide us to love of Krishna, to prema. That's a beautiful uh, sentence that Baba is giving us here. And we have to give up the devotional service attitude for Krishna even, no? Yeah. Isn't that a mystery? Yes, this is a mystery. <laughs> so that leads to love. Yeah, like Gurudev mentioned this, uh, love for Krishna is utmost is Gopi Baba. Soul consciousness, utmost Gopi Baba. But still Gopi Baba also centered Krishna. Mm. They, they have some kind of ex expectation of self-centered love. They want him. Yeah. They want him. But uh, for Manjari, the service of Radhika, they don't want anything from Radhika. Just to, they want to have service. And they, they, they are tasting Seba Rasa, mm -hmm. not uh, Shringan Rasa. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting. So this is Seba Rasa. So this only need, Manjari needs Seba, service to the, our Swami, nothing else. This is very, very nice. 
That is now the, the shocking news. If somebody didn't know it, give up the devotional <laughs> service to Krishna. <laughs> shocking news. Shock. Very shocking. Because that will lead us to the love of Krishna, to the service of Shri Radhika. So there's also no contradiction because Krishna is the heart of Shri Radhika. And Shri Radhika is the heart of Krishna. So we cannot separate them both. But like uh, Maharaj was explaining so nicely that when we want to love God or worship God only, there might be a lot of self-interest still hidden, conscious or not conscious. But if we are worshipping love of God, if we are worshipping Prema Bhakti, if we want to go into the lotus feet service of our Swami, then that is only possible by very selfless and humble and not non uh, you say non motivated devotion. And also for another point, I feel for Krishna, Krishna Bhakta could not satisfy Krishna fully at most. But the Manjari's case, Krishna fulfilled Manjari's, you know, sub, you know, Krishna fulfilled all his desire, Manjari could, you know, fulfill. So sometimes Krishna could not meet Sri Radha, but uh, Krishna Bhakta cannot help Krishna to meet Sri Radha. No. No. no but uh, then Krishna has to approach Radha's maid servant. And then Krishna sometimes beg, please, please give me an uh, audience of your Swamini. Please help me to, to, to attain Swamini's lotus feet. Krishna beg it. And then Manjari could fulfill his desire. Other people cannot. So this is the greatness of our, our Rupa and Rati, Manjari, etc. Also here, also here we see in these words from Baba that according to the commentaries, according to the tika of each Acharya, here we can see, like Suniti so nicely said, this is such wonderful statement. It can only come from someone who is in Radik Sneha. So now we see that here, this is not Visham Sneha, this is not Sam Sneha, so Baba clearly is in a Kandabhav, he is clearly in Radik Sneha, and so many sentences and so many of his paragraphs and uh, show that he is in that mood that he prefers way, way over the Seva to Swamini than to Krishna or even to both. So we are so blessed by the words of the Acharyas by Baba that we can understand what he means. He means clearly that... Uh, Above all pursuits of the Jiva, all the highest goals of the Jiva, Radik Sneha, more love for Radhika, Babala Sarati, is the highest. So we are so happy that Baba is giving us this, and we are clearly seeing this is the, the way out of this maze. Yes. Yes. Very Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. And here I want to jump a little, because I was so... Eager. I was not, no, I was so, um, I was remembering that verse where, where Baba is giving this explanation how the Mandaris are serving Krishna by helping him with Radha's now. And I, by mercy, I found it. It is verse 97. And I want to read a little bit of this because it is so sweet. <laughs> Yeah. It's called the rarely attained nectar of Sri Radha's holy name. And it is uh, now in a Leela. I want to also go a little bit like Baba's grace into the Leela. By the grace of Sri Radha's holy name, another sweet pastime is revealed to Sri Pad. He sees Krishna sitting in a kunj, eagerly waiting for Shimati to arrive. When Shimati arrives, 
She wants to witness and test Krishna's love for her. So she goes to a nearby arbor and hides herself there, sending some of her friends inside the kunj, where Krishna is waiting for her. Seeing the Sakis, Krishna eagerly asks them, Oh Sakis, where is Priyaji? The Sakis reply, Shama Sundara, her superiors have forbidden her to leave the house today. Sham says, but why do I smell her bodily fragrance then? <laughs> Tell me the truth. She must be hiding in some nearby grove just to make fun of me. And the Sakis reply, Sham, our clothes carry Radhika's fragrance because we are always close to her. We tell you the truth. Today, she really couldn't come. When Nagara hears these words, he becomes very upset and says, tell me, how can I still meet her? The Sakis then advise him, look, just stay here for some time and be fixed in chanting her honey sweet name. And she will surely show up being attracted to your chanting. <laughs> On the Saki's advice, Shyam lovingly starts to chant Radha's holy name. But after some time, he asks them, Oh, Sakis, I have chanted for so long now, but still your friend didn't show up. <laughs> the Sakis reply, look, along with the chanting, you should also do some hearing. <laughs> we will chant the holy name of Radha and you listen. <laughs> so the Sakis are chanting Radha's name and Shyam is listening with love and attention. <laughs> Becoming more and more attracted to Radha by this practice of hearing, Shyam says, Oh, Sakis, now I have also listened to the holy name of Sri Radha, but still she has not shown up yet. One Saki then jokingly replies, Look, Shyama Sundara, I think that you are committing offenses to the chanting of the holy name. And that's why you don't get any results. Have you maybe gone to Chandravali's grove today? <laughs> Sitting in the hiding and hearing her friends jokes, Swamini is laughing. Sripad in his kinkari form sticks to her like a shadow and floats in oceans of bliss. The Sakis now tell Krishna, Look, just clap your hands and chant the holy name out loud. Then you will get rid of your offenses and the holy name will be pleased with you. Then Nagaraj, in great loving ecstasy, and with tear-filled eyes, joins the Sakis in ecstatic Radhanam Sankirtan. Wow. Seeing this ecstasy, Srimati can no longer stay in hiding, so she enters the kunj, kunj and blesses Nagara with her audience. And this holy name of Sri Radha, says Sripad, is my very life. So here we see that even Krishna, he takes shelter of the holy name of Sri Radha and uh, is giving us hope that if he takes on to this practice with so much love and devotion, with, uh, you know, tears in his eyes and so much eagerness, then we should also do this, no? Yeah, same process, no? <laughs> yeah. Same process. And uh, Christ, if Krishna become more eager, tear in tear, you know, tear coming out, so eager to chant, then Swami is listening. Oh, 
he loves me a lot. And also, I remember also in morning past time in, in Nandagaon. So before Radhika coming, Krishna is bathing and Krishna is, is sitting in his meditation room. Mm -hmm. And then he starts chanting Radha's name and meditate Radhika's you know, be beautiful oh. form. And then after that, Radhika appear. Mm. So this is a, this is a way, huh? The chanting the name and the meditation, and then eagerness is is utmost. Then Radhika. In a few days, we are reading one uh, one sentence of Baba, Anantas Baba Maharaj, and this saying. We, we are hearing and uh, constantly hearing, then slowly, slowly, security, security is coming. Mm -hmm. And then more intensely doing, then be spirit is coming. Then after be spirit is, is at most, then shaksha darshan, personally, radika or mohan appear in front of us. And this Ragnar Das's case, he does not satisfy. In a latter stage, he may satisfy some spirit or something. But uh, at Ragnar Das's case, he does not satisfy even be spirit. So he was completely longing after Swamini. He needs Shaksha Darshan, direct Vision. vision and or service, direct yeah. yeah direct appearance of Sri Radhika and he needs direct service for Radhika. So this is Baba explained very nicely. I forgot uh, which bus but uh, so this is uh, amazing. So Niti you chose this but this explanation so wonderfully because here again we can see the positions of the Kingaris. I mean they are teaching the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is so funny. <laughs> this is the way this is the way Raganuga Bhakti works. Krishna is taught and at the same time we are all taught also. So the Manjaris are teaching Krishna and they are teaching indirectly us two very important things. They say to him, okay, you chant now, but you should chant and hear. So indirectly she's they are saying to him the importance of Sadhu Sangha. You can chant and chant and chant as long as you want, but if you are not in Sadhu Sangha, it will be useless. It will not have any effort. And the second, the second teaching they give to him and to us, if you are not Ekanda, if you are not Ekanda Bhav, again, you commit offenses to the Holy Name. If, and in this case, you go to Chandravali. But in our case, we go to Kiana, we go to Karma, we go to, you know, we go to many, many subjects. We are not like Gurudev is saying, we are not Ekanda Bhav, we are not in our study Bhav. So this is a very, very wonderful paragraph. Thank you so much. I forgot it already, 97. There are so many thousands of words and, and lineages and lines, but this is so beautiful. The mantras are teaching Krishna and us. This is really, thank you so much, Sunidhi. This is a great, great, a great part of text. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it's sweet. And also about the offenses, like you said, the offenses is distractions, no? And they say, for us, distractions is like, you know, whatever, watching TV and going to parties or whatever we have, whatever it is, that is my distraction. It's a personal distraction. We all know better than, you know, where we are distracted in our hearts and feelings and minds. But for Krishna, it is, of course, have you been in another conch? Have you been uh, not one-pointed to our Swamini? She will not come if you are not one-pointed. <laughs> the Leela, it is also, you know, another dimension. Yes, I love this. I remember this. And by mercy also, Baba was showing this to me. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, you have read something very nectarian. That is connected, but you don't always find it, right, Haru Baba? You don't always find it out of the big books. It's very difficult. I would love. There was one devotee. Um, he contacted me. He is the one who made that for for one of Iskon Swami's. He made this database where you just enter the word and then 
When yes. you enter this word, it shows the book of Prabhupada. So he wanted all the books from Baba and he wanted to create and he wanted to create this one. And then I said to him, yeah, but if I do this, you have to give me one also. But he was not very eager to share. So I, I, I told him, nah, I cannot give you all the books and you don't give me. So this would be a wonderful thing. Like, you know, you just type in this one sentence and it immediately shows you like a word search or like a Google search. Yes. Maybe in the future, in the future, this can become available. This would be very wonderful. Like like uh, the, the Veda database, uh, you remember in ISKCON that you mm. can search everything in Prabhupada's words. It's not easy, but maybe in the future someone can code this and can can make such a such a thing available. Otherwise, we have to search the PDFs and the docs. But it's it's easy. It's very wonderful if you know where to find it. Then now I I would not have found it if you if you asked me. So it's 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 too much. You know, it's like five six thousand pages of of of, of Baba's words. It's very difficult to find the exact uh, paragraph but this is astonishing very astonishing yes i had the same feeling today i was also feeling it must be a time or you know a, a service for someone who is inspired to to put it all together and then make it more easy to find certain yeah. Uh, so certain verses and connections. It should be someone. It should be someone who can put this inclination in the in the service. So someone who is into programming and he, they, he, they they can contact me. I would I would nicely give if if someone from our family would do this from our lineage would do this. I would gladly give the main books out in, in word form because word form you know it's difficult because yeah. But uh, if, if someone is inspired to do this, this would be really really. A great saver. Maybe some at one point someone appears and he will do it. Yeah, why not? Let's see. The prayers are there. Yeah. So this is the meaning of the words. Millions of the greatest means the life liberated or devotion to God. Like this, goals of human lives will uh, worship the nectar of Radha's lotus feet. So even Krishna, he is in that category that he loves to worship Shrimati Radhika's lotus feet, and we are we are enchanted by that. That is where the Mandaris have their greatest pleasure when Krishna, when Mohan becomes so eager that he is rolling on the ground of Vrindavan to have her dasha, to chant her holy name, to serve her lotus feet. The statement that millions of wish-yielding trees always grow on the playground of Sri Radha's lotus feet does not indicate Aishwarya Prakash, a manifestation of opulence and prowess like in Vaikuntha. Chaitanya Chaitamrita states, The forest of Vrindavan is a very natural scenery. The people don't ask anything else from the wish wielding trees and vines, but fruits and flowers. The word Amanda indicates that the people of Raj do not even ask or pick the fruits and flowers. But these generous trees gives them spontaneously. So here a little bit of the natural scenery of Vrindavan is glorified. And it's like in Vrindavan everything is there, but the but the Rajabasis they just, just use the flowers and the fruits for the worship of their divine couple. They don't even need to ask, but the trees, they give them that, give them everything they need. It's not an endeavor. Everything is self-manifest there. Means that he, the trees are also the conscious beings that are wanting to serve with their fruits. The flowers, they are very conscious beings. They even show way to Krishna when he's looking for Swamini. 
they open the kunj, they make a kunj, they are, you know, breathing. They are breathing prema. In Vrindavan, everything is prema and everything is serving prema. Finally, Sripat says, Shri Radha Kinkarinam Ludhati Charanayor Adbuta Siddhi Koti. Millions of wonderful perfections roll at the feet of Radha's maidservant. maidservants. The maidservants do not even cast a sidelong glance at all the mystic perfections that lie at their feet, ready for their command. They are not interested in that because they have a higher taste, right? They have a higher feeling, let's say feeling. It's not about any material taste. It's a feeling. They are living in the feelings of Mahabhav because they serve Mahabhav. They serve Swamini who is only made from feelings. And they have, you know, become so much close to Swamini and so much in oneness with her feelings that they have nothing on their minds and on their hearts but to serve her feelings and to always in every second tune into her feelings in such a way that they can make arrangements for the next service. And that is as the Nanda Maharaj was nicely explaining, called Seva Ras. It is a flow, and Rupa Goswami says, like honey from a jar, when he is explaining that, you know, this highest form of, of devotion, it comes like a flow, it's never ending, because it becomes a natural uh, position of the, of the Dasis, that they feel the feelings of Swamini, and they only want to serve her in her feelings to Mohan. And the speciality of the Dasis is that they are so pure in their service, they have not the slightest interest in Mohan in that regard. Everyone else in Vrindavan is a devotee of Mohan, more or less, because the Sakas, they are playing with Mohan, and Mother Yashoda, Nanda Baba, they are the parents, and there are many servants in Nanda Gaon. But here, the Dasis, they are just interested in the Swamini service. They are not even interested to feel what's Mohan's got to do with this. He is only interested because she, he is the beloved of our Swamini. She wants to make him happy. So also we, we also consider him the beloved of our beloved. And we serve him like this. So they don't even cast a sidelong glance at all the mystic perfections that lie at their feet means the mystic perfections, they are like waiting for service also. <laughs> but in Vrindavan, mystic perfections are not so much required because it's all about love and feelings, how to love more and how to serve Ra uh, Radha and Mohan's love and meeting and not how to do the miracle of anything else. Anyone who has tasted even a drop of Krishna's sweetness considers sense gratification, liberation, and mystic perfection to be insignificant. So it is easily understandable that millions of perfections roll at the feet of the maidservant of Sri Radhika, who considers even devotion to be to Krishna, to Sri Krishna, to be insignificant. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Baba is quite straight here. Very, no? very straight. Huh? So devotion to Krishna is not the goal of the Dasis. Devotion to Radhika is their goal. They don't serve Krishna. Uh, my, I mean Radhika to come closer to Krishna. No. They serve Radhika to be close to love, 
to Mahabhav and to feel her desires and to fulfill her desires. They have no hidden agenda. No? Yes. And that is, Baba says, Adbut is astonishing. And the word Adbut means that these mystic perfections are enchanting all the great sages. But all these cities are simply rolling at the feet of Sri Radhika's maid servants. Ababa makes again such a strong point that great sages they have desires for mystic perfections. Like many of them, they breathe in and out and they breathe less so that they can increase their lifespans. They are sitting nowadays in the cages or caves of Himalaya mountains so they can do more uh, meditation. But these Dasis, they are not interested in that. They, they don't want to have any more long lifespans, not anything, uh, you know, power to make the magic happen, but they want uh, to serve Swamini and they they are waiting for anything that can happen that will be favorable for, for their Swamini. But these mystics perfections, they are not so helpful for this. <laughs> no? Yeah. They don't need to live a long life. They don't need to have any out. What else is a mystic? Oh, yeah, because smaller and become bigger yeah, and yeah. to manipulate and to to uh, yeah what create to something create yeah realize. yeah 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 you know these are the materializations of of some vibhuti or whatever this is also called vibhuti <laughs> this powerful uh, life and, and that makes the life longer you know the cities they always have to do with making people live longer become more healthy and more powerful and you but, see all this all these yes. sages and all these yogis and all these great, great persons, they will never be able to touch a whiff of what we are hearing now. They could, they could never go in front of, of Krishna and talk like <laughs> Rati and Rupa Manjari and, and uh, hear Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. They could never do this. They, they, it's not possible for these mystic and then yogic power. So what is the, the what is the use of all that yogic power when we can listen to such sweet talks when the manjaris are chastising or teaching the Supreme Personality they worship in their prayers and they want to become, you know, like you said, all the eight, nine, whatever mystic powers. So the real mystic power is to help Krishna to, to meet with Radhika. That is the real city, that is the real perfection that we can that we can become instruments of their uh, meeting, you know, or on the other side, we can become instruments to ease the pain of separation from Swamini. So that actually is the real mystic power. And in the third verse, I think of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, like Prabhupada Saraswati is saying that great sages like Narada, Muna, Shiva, and all the big Munis, they can never uh, touch the, the Seva, of the mantras and they will never really go into that what we are hearing now on a Sunday in September. You know, this is very beautiful. Beautiful. Jai Ho. Jai. When I attain the maid servanthood of Sri Radhika, then I lose my taste for everything else. Last sentence. Yes. Yes, it is easy, but to, to, to realize it is takes time. Check. Check. Yeah, you have to check. Oh, no, check. No, no, no. It's not easy. It's easy to check. Where I am. Yes. Yes. Maharani says, now we can check where I am. <laughs> right? Yes. So thank you all. Thank you.